Welcome to REIP Insights, a podcast that brings you the latest update on what is happening in the real estate market across Australia, as well as conversations with dynamic leaders sharing their insights and knowledge. They say leadership is lonely. However, it also requires enormous courage, resilience and bravery. In this leadership podcast, we bring you conversations with dynamic, successful leaders who are walking the leadership path. They share their stories, habits, and what drives them to be better leaders. This podcast is brought to you by REIP. We are a collective of industry leaders committed to empowering our industry and our clients. My conversation today is with Kylie Davis, founder of Australia's first PropTech Association. I have known Kylie for a long time, and every time I speak with her, the passion she has for the industry and technology is just inspirational. However, I do often joke with her that some of her stuff that she does talk to me about does make my brain hurt just a little. Kylie has just launched the PropTech Awards covering startup, scale-ups, and established technology. REIP are sponsors of the Sales and Marketing Award, and I am excited to be a judge as well. Really looking forward to the submissions, giving us an eye into the future of technology. In this podcast, we talk about how technology is changing the landscape for better, what businesses need to consider, and if you're looking at changing off a legacy system, what are some of the things that you need to think about, and much, much more. Carly is also a board member of the RISE Collective, which is focused on health and well-being of our industry. The RISE Conference is on the 5th of May in Melbourne, and tickets can be bought at riseconference.com.au. If you haven't already downloaded the Real Care app for yourself, your teams, or your family, I really urge you to do so. And if you are a prop tech company listening to this podcast, please get your submissions in as soon as possible. Please enjoy my conversation with the wonderful Kylie Davis. My guest today is the fabulous Kylie Davis, who is the founder and executive director of the Prop Tech Association. She is the expert in real estate prop tech and digital media research. And can I say just personally, uh, it is wonderful to see a woman heading up the Prop Tech Association in Australia. Kylie, welcome. Thanks so much, Sun. It's great to be here. So tell us more about the Prop Tech Association. You founded it. And yes. uh, how many years ago did you do that? Just last year. So oh. literally we're about a year old. So we started on the 25th of February um, 2020 and uh, announced it with great fanfare and got huge amounts of support for it. And then COVID hit and we we're like, oh, okay. Yeah. Well, um, a very early like happy birthday else. to you. Um, Thank you. Why, why did you feel that we needed to have an association, a prop tech association? So look, real estate is, we felt that the technology providers in prop tech needed their own industry association. So in real estate, you know, the REIs um, Mm. exist to support the interests of um, real estate agents. We've got REAP that's doing a great job um, that you're doing with the franchise groups and all the different groups around. And then also in, in the property space, in the in the real tech space, you know, um, the Property Council of Australia is representing the interests of property owners and, and the big landlords and um, and the big end of town. So what we noticed was that, uh, you know, I'm sure everyone's noticed over the last five, six years, prop tech has just been accelerating and and phenomenally in just the last couple of years again and there's so much innovation going on out there and we wanted to create the association so that the innovators had had a community of their own that we could get together and we could discuss the issues about um, that, that we were facing and a lot of those around well how do you convince a whole analog industry to adopt technology that's a problem that we're probably better off trying to share to to solve together rather than do it individually you know product by product and we also could see from like some early uh, Lara Scott and I held an event um, on the Gold Coast around ARIC in 2019 which was a a prop tech pop-up and um, and that was phenomenally successful we thought we'd get about 30 mates into a room we ended up with 90 people there we couldn't get anyone to go home and And just the conversations and and the collaboration that came out of that was fantastic. So we thought, well, we need to make this something, you know, this needs to be be a thing. 
Yeah. And so, you know, just like REIP, we sort of, we do represent the whole industry, not just the Sorry. groups, franchise groups and stuff. And you're right, you know, it, it's almost, it, it is protecting the members and the, the businesses in that industry to make sure that um, they have the best of, you know, whether it's technology, whether it's training, whether whatever it happens to look like, that we do control our future in yeah. some way, shape or form. So what are some of the key goals for the association? So our key goal is to make prop tech um, both uh, to educate around prop tech and to make it really transparent. So we want and, and to support innovation in the space. Yeah, so we want to make prop tech um, transparent. We want to make it easy for um, users of prop tech, so real estate agents or real estate businesses and, and property businesses to be able to make great decisions around prop tech um, with who they're going to go with, what technology they need. We want to make it easier for them to understand what's out there and available um, to solve the problems uh, that they've got and, and help them identify some of the problems they maybe don't even know they've got. That's right. we, and we want to make it... Um, so we want to educate about PropTech and what it's doing at the moment and where it's going next and so that, you know, our customers themselves can start to also strategize around where that's going to let their businesses go. And so, yeah, education, um, collaboration and transparency because an informed marketplace makes always makes better decisions. Yeah. How big is the industry in Australia? And I know it's growing really fast. I mean, every day I think a new company pops up from somewhere. Oh, um, my God. <laughs> So, well, okay. So, best guess because because there is no definitive answer to this, and it de and like all good data, it depends where you you know draw the circle around the um, around the data set. About two years ago, Chris Rolls from Pi Lab came out with a, a prop tech map that had about 195 businesses on it that he'd been able to map. Now they were mainly in the residential space, which probably explains some of it. But that was kind of the agreed idea as to how many prop techs were out there. And that was about, that's about two, two and a half years old now. Um, we reckon at the association that there's over 600 prop techs so, uh, that we've been able to start to count. So um, it is really hard because every day you literally learn about a new one. We launched the Prop Tech Awards last week and every day we're getting multiple downloads of our awards criteria from prop techs that I have never heard of and I thought I knew everyone in the yeah. industry but I'm I really don't <laughs> there's a whole lot of people out there I've got to meet you know that you kind of go okay so it's for the property industry and I understand property industry is more than just real estate yes transactions yeah, yeah. residential and commercial yep. and um and property management but do you think it's too many at some point, we are going to get to the point where we kind of go, no more products. Well, no you more. Know, are there too many real estate agents out there? So uh, no, no, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> How many products do you need to run an office? Uh, well, well, that's true. Well, look, it's not just in the, it isn't just in the residential real estate space. So we see, we're seeing technology, we're seeing innovation happen across a couple of um, general, like broad areas. We're seeing um technology happen across uh, the residential transaction space so work and, and sales and marketing space so innovation that's helping agents sell you know list and sell more easily and to really refine their processes in the background and um and make it a lot a lot more frictionless so you know it's not as hard you don't have to move as much paper from here to there to everywhere to get a transaction done we're seeing a lot of um work happening in the sales and marketing space um you know and and some of the most the biggest success stories that everyone probably knows about in residential real estate are in that sales and marketing space i rate my agent active pipe um you know box brownies the all of those guys um open agent lots of technology happening in that space um we're seeing but then you also sort of start to look on the fringes of it so so they're the things that are enabling agents and and, and property and facilities management as well huge yeah. in the last two or three years huge um increase in the number of technology businesses that are delivering to that to that um market and what we're also seeing is that while they're delivering services to you know the b2b services to real estate agents and to building managers or property managers they're also deliver you know there's a another track of age of um prop techs that are delivering sort of direct b2c so not not everyone solves every problem the same way but then on the other end of the spectrum you've got 
um, the commercial end of town where you've got an extraordinary amount of technology that is actually really exciting for us in residential around smart buildings and smart cities. Um, and a lot of that is impacting on the project marketing market. Yeah. So the yeah. big apartment towers. So that impacts on us as real estate agents, even though we might not have anything to do with, with it, mm. we still need to know about it. And we're seeing an awful lot of stuff around the design and development of, of our cities and our and our urban spaces. And that's tied into the data analysis. Um, it's tied into how we're designing and, you know, real-time um, iterations of buildings and virtual and all of that kind of technology that's coming through as well. And then it also ties into a full, all of these things start to create a brand new roadmap for what affordability and ownership can look like. And, and then you start, and, and how we finance our both, you know, our bigger projects and how we finance our individual purchases of property and whether an individual purchase of property looks like me going out and buying a house or a unit, or does it look like me going out and buying bits like, you know, bricks or smaller shares of multiple properties? What does a property portfolio of the future look like? Mm. So there's an awful lot of stuff that even though maybe it doesn't impact on how an agent sells and markets right now, there's things happening in the space as a whole that we need to know about because they could influence what kind of products or service services we're offering in the future and then you get into the whole in you know fintech which has been around about five years longer than um, prop tech and you also see that um you also see you know and that's impacting the mortgage space and and the and the ownership space as well and there's even reg tech and insure tech and they're all impacting on us as well if you were a business today and let's talk about real estate um, my brain hurts after that. Moment. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I wasn't supposed That's to make right. it hurt. That's all right. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, you know, maybe 600 isn't enough. We need more. No, yeah, there's uh, probably more. After that, yeah. So, um, you know, let's take it back to real estate. And we do have a lot of products that are available to us at the moment. How do I select or what is it, are there any guidelines that I can use to make sure that I'm selecting the right one for my business? Yeah, there's a couple of there's a couple of different ways we need to look at it. So the first one is to not try and assess every piece of tech that's on the market to choose the best one to solve the problem that you think you've got in front of you. So the idea is you have to really define, you have to work out what does an amazing experience in my business look like around, you know, buying or selling a property, and where where are, where are my team struggling to deliver to that amazing standard like what what and so therefore what could we improve and if you can get really clear on where the pain points are you can then identify so through those pain points you can then work out what technology solutions are out there that could actually solve those pain points and sometimes those pain points will get solved in ways that you didn't expect mm. so you might think that you've got a uh, you know, you need to improve your property management um, division and think that, oh, well, I better go out and buy the latest shiny, um, you know, the latest version of whatever, um, you know, property management software is because that will let us do it, the, you know, what we've always done the way that we've, you know, but a bit faster and a bit better. But if you're able to assess what that amazing experience looks like, you might actually be able to work out some really big pain points in your business that a different solution that, that solves, that does it differently could actually add a whole lot new value into your business. Mm. So that's, that's the first thing that I always, is always recommend is that like work out what the problem is, what, work out what the pain is with your team and that your customers are feeling and why your team can't reduce that pain because yep. of the systems and processes in your business. And then once you've found the, then once you've sort of got an idea as to, okay, so this is the pain point and okay, I've found, like, there's a couple of texts that could actually help me with that. You then actually need to get clear on, and so how, how risk averse am I? Or how, how, um, how bold am I feeling about solving this problem? Mm -hmm. And so what, what, and this is where the PropTech Association comes in. So we've started to try and clarify the language around PropTechs and PropTechs come in sort of three flavors, if you like. There's startups, which we all kind of know about, and they're, they're brand new businesses that have got an idea or a technology solution that they think that they're pretty sure is gonna fly. And they're in that early stage. So they're usually under three years old, um, um, and they have what's called an MVP or a minimum viable product. They've they've tested out their theory and they've built it. You know they've built a working prototype that they're that they're ready to to 
to test on someone. Um, then you've got the scale up. So these are guys that are sort of usually three to up to about 10 years old. So they've been in the market a, a little while. Um, they've got a product that is pretty robust. It probably, they're probably making a whole lot of innovation and, and change and, and updating and improving it constantly. Uh, and they're going really fast. They're still quite flexible, but there's often with scale ups, some, you know, teething issues around customer support or, or helping uh, in that space. And then on the other hand, you've got the established suppliers who have been around forever. And so they're ones like, you know, realestate.com, domain, CoreLogic, you know, MRI, they've, they've been around for a really long time. And their issue is that they've got legacy products that they're trying to, you know, they're trying to update, but they have very big processes and systems sitting behind them. So sometimes they're not as fast as you want them to be. Yeah. So you have to kind of decide, how how you know how um, how much skin do I want in the game, and how how risk averse am I? Do I want and choose a prop tech that is kind of uh, equal to your risk profile. So yeah. if you're okay with trying someone who's really new and innovative, absolutely give them a go. But make sure you don't bet the whole farm on them. Don't try and roll out their tech, you know, from day one to like you know, 700 staff. Like don't <laughs> break it down into a really small little project with them and get them and, and test and learn with them and, and help them work out where the, um, where the hiccups are going to be and, and be part of, you know, partner with them to get uh, that to happen and maybe even negotiate that with them. Um, and then with the scale, and then understand too that, um, depending on how well resourced the tech the prop techs are will determine how quickly they can do the things that you want them to do and how well how much support they can mm -hmm. offer you and things like that so you just have to kind of you know pros and cons on mm -hmm. on how you feel about that do you agree and, and this is personal experience in my own businesses um do you agree that with the startups and scale-ups if you do take one of their products on, that you you kind of have to accept the fact that it may not always work all the time oh, no. the way you want it to work. Like, you know, um, it's not going to be perfect. If you want perfect, you have to go to a legacy product for that. Yeah, exactly. So um, if you want, per yes, exactly. So, you know, start especially startup products yeah. are products that are still um, usually, especially the the younger they are, the more likely they are to to have performance issues because that's actually part. You know, going from that original product to actually starting to scale it and grow it into a more robust product is usually part of the a part of the back end development. You know, science that's going on in the in the background that you can't see. So when you go when you're using a brand new startup, you need to be really open minded and flexible. You need to have like a little roped off section of your business that you're testing it on so you know and um if you're for example if you're doing something in the property management space don't roll it out across your whole yeah. landlords yeah. just roll it out with like 10 of your best landlords who are up for it as well like tell them what you're going to do and what you think the benefits are going to be to them and get them on board so that they give you feedback as well mm. and um and recognize that sometimes the platform might be down, you know, and and uh, and then it's really about whose throat can you choke to make it get up as quickly as possible. Like, do you have a relationship with the <laughs> with the founder to get them to fix that? Usually, you will. <laughs> and whose throat can I choke? I'm from now on. <laughs> One throat to choke. That's what you want. You don't. I mean, yeah. and that's and that's where big, um, you know, that's where big established suppliers are really frustrating because there is no one throat to choke. You get put onto a, you know, you get to send an email that sits in a support queue that, you know, and you have to escalate, escalate, escalate. But the great thing about a startup is that they will be really responsive to your feedback. Yeah, yeah, and that because they want it to be. You you kind of end up being the business that provides them with the feedback. Yes. For them to build the product up to where it needs to be, you know. So yes. just just yeah. be prepared for that. I think is, is yeah. Message. And look, you can you can make that part of your negotiations if you mm -hmm. take them on and. Um, and the way to do that is to be really fair about it. So, you know, especially in the, com you know, there are some elements of the property community that believe, well, because I'm testing, you should give me all of this for free. Well, if one of the stress points of a startup is that you've got founders who are usually working for free and putting all of their money into developing something, the promise of future income isn't going to pay their mortgage or keep their kids, you know, at school. Yeah. Yeah. So, so be mindful of that. But there's certainly 
you know, you can certainly negotiate things like, okay, so I'm going to try this. We're going to agree on a rate that I'm going to try it for. And you're going to, you know, can I have it for that rate for the rest of its life? So you can go out and sell it to other people. I won't tell you anyone what my rate is. Or if you really like the tech, you uh, might, you know, there's the opportunity to, to sometimes invest in some of these businesses by taking a share in it or, you know, mm. but, but work out what you can negotiate. Mm. What, are the, what, are, what are some of the things that agents and property managers can do now that they couldn't do five years ago? Oh my God, pretty much everything. (laughs) I think the question is, if you're doing things the same way that you were doing them five years ago, I just stop, I just stop, stop, stop. Um, So, so things that you couldn't do five, where do, where do I start? So in this, let's start in the, in the sales space. Yep. Five years ago, you, you had to manually move documents from one spot to the next. So you had to you had to type someone's name into a CR into your CRM, and then you had to create the paperwork for their transaction, and then you had to attach that to an email, and then they would have to print it out, and then they would sign it, and then they would fax it back to you or email it back to you, mm. and then you would photocopy or scan that, and then attach it to the file in the CRM, and then you would you know and you know and, and, and I mean, completely on. fraught yeah, yeah completely yeah. fraught so yeah. so. Um, create contact in CRM, open form, fill in form, hit send, go. Yeah. Sounds yeah. a bit simpler to me. Yeah. And then, and from there, you can basically say, well, you know, Sardner and Kylie and Mark and John are interested in 37 Potter Street. Boom, 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 bash. They've all got the they've all got the information about 37 Potter Street and actually now they're starting to send mm. me bids and offers and I can see how well financed they are. So yeah. I can tell which one's got even though Mark might have offered the most money, Sardner's actually got the best offer on the table. So let's negotiate that while I'm yeah. at the kids' soccer rather than having to be in the office and ringing your assistant saying, can you email that contract over to so-and-so because he wants to make another, you know, like all of that stuff. Yeah. I think I think if your businesses are having, you know, we should be paperless conversations or how, how can we move to become paperless, then you are falling behind. Yeah. Um, one of the most common conversations I hear about as well is the whole time management stuff. So, you know, you, you hear people talk about, we're going to give you time management training or we need time management training because we are just, just we just can't manage the workload that we've got. And I think if that's the world or paradigm you're working in, then you've really got to assess the technology you're using because no amount of time management is going to solve your legacy software issue. It's no, exactly. You're going to fix it, right? So if exactly. you've got time management issues, you should be looking at what products are on the market to give you more time to do the things that you want to do because time management training isn't going to fix it. No, time management training is just showing you how to do what you already do in a slightly faster way. Is yeah. it? But um, and I mean, and that's a great point too. Like what we're seeing, you know, in the last five years, automation and AI and lead generation and things like you know those sorts of elements are starting to to really change how agents are, are, are working mm. even and especially in the property management space like yeah. we're we're moving to a place now where you manage the exception not the rules not so the we've, we've come from a place where you had to do everything and if you didn't do it it was probably a problem and so everyone became really paranoid about the stuff they didn't do yeah. but the bots are now at a point where they're able to cope with you know the bulk of the work really really quickly mm. so that you can't that you do actually have time to finesse the the problem children that need mm. a bit more love mm. absolutely now let's talk about your awards the first prop tech awards in australia ever. yes or, yep ever coming up yep. um and, and it's national as well um you're excited about it you've got we're excited because we're sponsors of the sales and marketing Thank you. Award, which is fantastic um what do i need to do if i am a prop tech company that's other than the 600 we've already spoken about, I'm sure there's more out there and we need more. Uh, what 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 do I need to do to enter? Simply go to your website. Yep, proptechassociation.com.au and uh, click on the awards button. And um, there's a, uh, it, it's, it's all explained how to enter. We've also got a, I mean, I look, we all love tech, but I hate reading stuff on screen. So we've got like a downloadable PDF that you can print out and, and sit next to you while you're working out what your entry should be yep. um and um yeah and then click on the enter and it's it but if you if as a prop tech most prop techs have got a, what we call it the deck which is where you've got your basic your bet your proposition about who you are 
what you what you're trying to build out or what you've built um what the value you know what the addressable market of that and how you think you're going to go after it and if and then what the success is that you've had to date pretty much every prop tech on the planet has got a deck um and we've designed the awards so that you can take the information from your deck and and answer the answer questions inside the awards and, yeah. and you'll be pretty good and what are the categories we so across so we've got six awards across the three uh, in each category so the categories are startup scale up um established suppliers and then inside uh we've got um admin and efficiency um sales and marketing um pro uh, property and facilities management mm -hmm. and and this is commercial or residential. We've, like you can be either going into any of these categories because the idea is that the innovation and the thinking that is driving these categories actually is a. It doesn't matter whether it's residential or commercial. It, it kind of applies in the same way. Um, and then we've got affordability, uh, ownership, and finance is one category. Uh, so looking at all of those new models and, and some of the fintechs that are that are doing some really innovative stuff in the space and, and property valuation software. Um, and we've got design and development and smart cities and or smart buildings and cities. Nice. So there are six categories. And then at the end of the night, we will be having our best of the best prop tech of the year as a startup scale up and um, an established supplier. Okay. So, yeah. And, and what do they win, Carly? Do they do they win um, an amazing that, trophy, yes. honor, and glory? <laughs> they, they're the first winners. They're the first winners. I, I used to say, I mean, well, I still say it, but you know, in real estate, like if you're a real estate agent, there's a gazillion awards out there that you oh, can no. that you can win. Every child gets a prize in real estate, yes. you, you know. Um, but what really broke my heart was that the the genuine innovators uh, in, well, you know, I mean, a lot of real estate agents are innovative too, but the innovators who were allowing a lot of these guys to win awards um, and girls to win awards were, were, were not able to enter their not to take home any a trophy themselves so um so we we look, it, look winning an award is always a great way to promote and, and boost your business yeah. if you're trying to get funding if you're a smaller tech or you're going into another round if you're um it's awesome to be able to say that we are the most innovative prop tech in this in this space and as we you know go through as, as we do this you know over the next couple of years we're really looking forward to having a great um to being able to demonstrate that you know like a a college of of of, of graduates who mm. have who have won awards who have gone on to amazing things yeah oh i, I think in in over the next few years you'll see that the ones who won the award are the ones that are going to get the exposure and be highlighted and perhaps also even there'll be a little bit more trust in the product as well because they've been through a a, a, a rigorous process to be to, to be the winner of the award so yeah no doubt yeah now i'm going to get you to put your other hat on because you know you okay you're a woman you've got plenty of hats on yep. so you, the other hat you have is that you're a board member of rise yes. um so tell us about that because you've also got a conference coming up in may so tell us about that and and how we can get involved and and what rise is about so rise is about uh, trying to is about doing real estate differently. So um, Rise, the Rise Initiative was founded after the Christchurch terrorism attack. Um, and look, I'm only a very recent um, newcomer to to Rise, and I'm working on the the marketing and the rollout of of Rise and the Real Care app um, more broadly across the year. But um, so so Rise looks at wellness in real men, mental wellness in real estate. So we believe that real estate should not just be about chasing commission um that it actually that that great real estate agents are um understand the connection between um mental wellness physical wellness um performance and leadership with hitting great financial goals and so we're trying to make the industry more uh rounded and service orientated but also to deal with the extraordinary and terrifying levels of um of mental health issues that exist in real estate and we believe that that's probably be, well we, we believe that that's because the evidence shows that it's because we're very mono focused around this whole just chasing the money side mm -hmm. well I, I i did some research on this last year because i'm very passionate about this as well um and it, my focus was property management and um the we we had over a thousand property managers from around the country actually answer the survey so Yep. validated survey from our perspective and I've written some white papers around it 
but 77% of the people who responded were highly stressed. Yep. Now, you and I both know it's not good for their mental health, their physical health, their emotional health. They can't be good um, workers, employees, team members, client service people if they are that highly stressed. And I think as an industry, we have to put a focus on it. So, you know, thank you to Chris Hanley and, and the team who've, who've put Rise together. The Real Care app was launched earlier or middle of last year, wasn't it? Yeah, it was launched at the Rise X conference um, last year and we'll be um, putting renewed effort into getting it out there this year as well. So Real Care, you can go into the App Store um, or iTunes and or, at Apple Store and download it um, now. It's, it's basically in your pocket help to deal with stress, um, you know, dis mental discomfort. Um, it also has some amazing tools around finance, uh, you know, managing your finances, um, keeping, you know, dealing with, you know, stress or anxiety. Um, and it's built um, by the same people that have built an amazing app for the, um, for the police across Australia. Yeah. So um, it, it's an extraordinary app and it, it's a great um, tool just to have downloaded for those days when having someone tell you, you know, how to breathe properly. Is yes. Yeah. <laughs> I, Neither, I, I, don't, I actually shared it with my kids, you know, so I, I gave it to my family, my team at the business. And if people haven't downloaded it, I really urge you to do so. Um, how do I book in for the RISE conference? So riseconference.com.au. Um, easy as that. Easy and, as it's that. In, and it's in, in Melbourne. It's in Melbourne um, on May 5, Wednesday, May 5. Um, so depending on, you know, COVID willing, we're, we believe we're going to have about over a 1,000 agents there. We've, we've pre-sold an awful lot of tickets. So um, hoping to get more than that if COVID lifts. Um, but we've got some amazing speakers. Ben Crow, who is Ash Barty's um, performance yes. coach. Yes. Uh, he's fantastic. Uh, Lane Beachley uh, is speaking. Um, and, and she, you know, the champion world surfer. like she's you know, one of the most. Yeah. And she's she's also got, had an amazing journey around her mm. own mental wellness. Um, mm. uh, but, you know, lots of legends in of the real estate space, um, representatives of Marshall White, Jealous Craig, Nelson Alexander, um, some fantastic people on stage, Mark McLeod, Tom Panos, um, but, and also a lot of um, new voices. And it's all about really being honest about the, the, the shit that we're dealing with in, mm. you know, we, in ourselves mm. and our industry and having some, you know, not embarrassed and honest conversations around how we want that to, to change. Yeah. And I think COVID has made us realise that we can't keep going in the pace that we have been. Yeah. Um, we've all had a taste of a different way of working and living and there is no reason that we can't find a good hybrid model that works for businesses or works for individuals. Yeah, I think now is exactly the right time to be talking ab about this stuff mm. too because, mm. uh, yeah, you're right, because we have had time to step away and have a look at what we were doing. I think a lot of us are thinking, do I really want to wind myself up and become that person again? Or like, how can I, how can I do it differently? So yeah. that's, you know, come along to Rise and that's what we'll, we'll yeah. get into. Fantastic. Kylie Davis, as always, wonderful to talk to you. So you've got the Prop Tech Awards coming up um, to go to the Prop Tech website to um, download an application form and apply. If, or we'll put your nomination for the award if you work in the Prop Tech space or a, a, a startup, scale up, or uh, what was the other one? Established supplier. Established supplier. Thank you very much. And in terms of the RISE conference, go to rise.com.au and book yourself in for the 5th of May. If nothing else, it'll be exciting to actually visit. Oh, it'll be lovely. I can't wait. I'm going for the hugs. Yeah, <laughs> probably, probably when you and I see each other next. So um, thank you for your time and thank no, you thank for you. sharing all the wonderful things that you are doing with the PropTech Association. Thanks so much for having me. It's been great, Sandra. Thank you for joining us. Please take a few moments to rate, review and subscribe to our podcast. Until next time, stay safe and stay connected.